Hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. Thanks for clicking on my video today. What I'm going to do is start a little series on wire feed welding 101. Uh, basically just the basics of wire feed welding. And so in this video I'm going to go over basically the difference between flux core welding and then like traditional gas shielded MIG welding. Uh, a lot of people, I know I was a little confused about what the difference was uh, when I first started out and uh, there is a difference and you need to know that especially when going to select your first welder or uh, just knowing what you're going to get in terms of whether it's going to be just a flux core only welder or a uh, welder that has the ability to do flux core and MIG. So what I have right here is my 40 Easy Weld 140 MP. It's a 110 volt multi-process welder. So that means that it runs MIG, TIG, stick, and then if it runs MIG, it's going to run flux core. It is a DC inverter machine and it has DINs connections here to change your polarity. We'll get into that in a little bit. So the main difference between flux core and MIG welding, traditional MIG welding or GMA, gas metal arc welding, that's what GMA stands for if you hear that as gas metal arc welding, is the shielding gas. So back here on the back of my welding cart, you can see I've got some gauges and a tank of 7525 gas. That's a 75% CO2, 25% argon gas mixture for shielding solid core wire feed welding. And that is your traditional MIG or GMA welding. So I may have jumped the gun a little bit. Really the main difference between flux core welding and GMA welding is going to be the wire. Within a solid core wire that you're going to use for gas metal arc welding, it is a solid wire. And then on the inside of a flux core wire or FCA, when you're welding with that, there's actually flux inside of the welding wire, just like there's flux on the outside of a stick. And so that's really the main uh, difference between MIG and flux core. And then when you're using the solid core wire, you're going to use the gas. Now you can mix the two processes together and you can actually run what's called dual shield, which is gas shielded welding with a flux core wire. And uh, there's a lot of different purposes for that. I think that a lot of people use that when they're welding outside. Uh, gas metal arc welding or gas shielded wire feed welding is not as good when you're outside and the wind is blowing because it blows away your shielding gas. And I've experienced that before. So usually when I go outside, it's always windy where I live. So I uh, just go ahead and uh, pretty much just do flux core if I'm ever going to be welding outside. So getting into the difference between your flux core and your, or your flux core only and your MIG welders, or maybe even your MIG only welders. So if you're buying like a flux core only machine, I'll give you an example of a few. Of a few. The Yes Welder Flux 135, the Titanium Easy Flux 125, or the Century FC90. Those are three of the uh, better flux core welders that I can think of. None of those machines are going to come in with a gas hose connection on the back or anywhere on the machine. So on this machine, there is a brass fitting on the back of it that I can hook my gas hose to that runs from my regulators here, my gauges and runs into the back of the machine to a solenoid that when I pull the trigger on my welding lead it releases the gas uh, to shield my weld. On the flux core only machines these things are going to come in uh, well I'll get to polarity in a second they're going to come in they're not going to give you the option to weld with gas. Now a MIG machine it is going to have like I said that place to, to plug in a hose to run gas shielded welding processes. Now in a lot of MIG machines you're going to be able to run both MIG and flux core for example this this one is one of those examples where I can run MIG and flux core because let's get into this. There's a difference in polarity. Now polarity is whether your ground is running at positive or negative and your electrode is running at positive or negative. If you're going to be running MIG, your electrode is going to be positive and your ground clamp is going to be negative. So on this welder, since I have DINs plugs, since I run MIG, gas shielded MIG solid core wire welding with this machine, my welding lead here that you probably can't see is always running in positive and then my ground clamp is always is going to be in the negative terminal. So again, it is straight polarity when running MIG. Your electrode, which is where your wire comes out of, is going to be positive when welding with solid core wire and shielding gas, and your ground clamp is always going to be negative. Now, it is reverse polarity when you're welding flux core. So flux core is going to be the opposite. And this is why some MIG machines are not going to allow you to weld flux core if they don't give you the ability to easily change 
the polarity and reverse the polarity where your ground clamp is now going to be the positive and your electrode is going to be the negative. Now, I don't know the exact percentages, but it's somewhere around 75% uh, of your heat is going into your base metal when you're flux core welding. That is with the positive side going to your ground clamp and then the negative side is the other 25% and that is going to your welding lead like this where your wire comes out of. So as I was saying on some of these MIG, MIG only machines they may not give you and I don't know all of them I don't know what kind of models there are there's dozens of different uh, basic entry-level MIG welders but if they don't give you the option to change it easily either with the wires just right on the inside of the machine or with DINs plugs you're probably going to be stuck MIG welding only so you need to know what you're getting uh, when it comes to that and then with flux core again if it doesn't have the gas solenoid uh, good luck trying to to run the GMA process or the gas metal arc welding process with no shielding gas and solid core wire so one of the final differences between these two welding processes is that I suppose you need to know if you're gonna do one, the other, or both of them, is when you are flux core welding, you're going to want to take your welding lead and you're going to want to drag. You're want, going to want to pull away from your welding pool that you're creating as you're moving along doing your weld bead. This is basically gonna prevent slag entrapment, uh, some porosity, and other issues within the weld. And uh, in my experience, I can only weld, I can weld significantly better when pulling, it looks I get a way better bead profile than I can when pushing. Uh, maybe that's just from practice and maybe that's just me, but you're going to get a better quality weld when you're pulling. There's a saying out there, when there's slag, you drag. Uh, and then when you're gas welding, you can either push or pull from the, From what I understand. I think there's some people out there that are of the opinion that you have to push gas shielded wire feed welding. Whether that's the case or not, I, I've kind of done both. And just because I'm so practiced from flux core, because I originally started with flux core, I found that. I weld way better pulling and I get just a good a quality weld beads and I don't have porosity or any issues like that. So that's just something to note is that when there's slag, you drag. Slag is the coating of the flux that is on top of the weld beam when you're finished. And uh, when there's gas, you can do pull or push in my opinion. It wouldn't hurt to go and look at other people's opinions on that because I'm just a DIY level welder. So that's really the main differences between your gas shielded MIG welding, traditional MIG welding. When people say MIG welding, that's what they are usually referring to is the GMA process gas shielded metal arc welding with a solid core wire and when you're talking about flux core welding people are generally well this is a little bit of a you know a little bit of a your mileage may vary thing a lot of people when they say flux core they're talking dual shield that's what i've seen one of my favorite really good instructional welding channels whenever they talk about flux core I think 90, about 90, 80, 90% of the time, these guys are talking about dual shield. Uh, but generally when you're talking to kind of like a homeowner, DIY, farmer level guy, a homesteader guy that's gonna be doing some flux core welding, it's the FCO process, flux core arc welding, and it is going to be a flux filled core in a wire. So yeah, that's going to be really the uh, basics of the difference between these two welding processes. This is gonna be my first video in this series. I'm not exactly sure if this was the best place place to start um, but I thought it was kind of a good one because people need to know what they're getting into before they even start welding and the difference is the differences between these two welding processes so thanks for watching everybody if you like this video give it a thumbs up helps my channel out if you aren't subscribed already go down and click subscribe I'd really appreciate it if you did that thanks for watching I hope to see you in my next video